So maybe the first question, how do you see the potential of agribusiness in the context of Congo? Ooh, I think, um, as many speakers pointed out today, the Congo probably has one of the biggest agribusiness potential in Africa. Um, the point that we are, as SNV are making is that the agribusiness development should not be just done by large agro farms only. It can also not only be done by small holder farmers. They need to work together. This is what we call our inclusive business model, where large agro farmers work with smallholder farmers in an outgrower type of scheme, but making sure that these are fair and long-term sustainable relationships. We also want to make the point that that production model needs to be an environmentally sustainable production model. Agroforestry models, there are many, many examples. What type of arguments do you use to convince investors to go on that line of inclusive and green ag agricultural growth? Well, the main line of argument is actually that if you look at the metrics and the statistics in enterprises that have gone that way, they show that it makes total business sense to be inclusive in that sense, and also it makes uh, total business sense to go green. So the figures actually speak for themselves. It also helps the, the company in terms of its, let me say, its license to operate, if it also works with the surrounding communities and they benefit in the, for a long term from that relationship with the company. Trust and loyalty are the key elements here. They're sort of the glue that makes this work. And do you see a risk that it might not go that, that way? Do you know any business where there is no risk? I think there are risks, sure. Organizing smallholder supply chains to work efficiently you know, has its set of risks. And yet, I think we need to take that risk. There is no other way that, uh, for us to take smallholder producers along in the growth path that we all have set on. The smallholder farmers of today, you know, the smallholder farmers of the future will be bigger smallholder farmers than, than, than they are today. Uh, because there is no way that that current format uh, will survive in the future. They will slowly grow through different types of aggregation models to become viable economic un uh, 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 units. Last question, what would you recommend both to the government of the DRC and both to the civil society of DRC to make this happen? Well again, the government I think needs to put some enabling policies in place, some schemes that in incentivize uh, these kind of operations. Uh, we also need, we need what I call blended financing instruments from the financing institutions, which is just commercial financing combined with public financing. The public financing is needed uh, because otherwise you cannot organize these small of, of, uh, supply chains. Companies will find that too risky, so you need that kind of uh, additional financing. Uh, facilities to be put in place. The role of the civil society is the one that we are also an, an NGO and the role that we play is that of a, an independent third party and it is interesting that time and again when you work on inclusive business uh, adventures uh, that role of the third party is acknowledged. You need, we need uh, a party that is trusted by the government, that is trusted by business and that's also trusted by smallholder farmers. And that trust is not automatically there. So if an independent party fills that role, then they can make the whole thing happen. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right.